today's hot topic is um, where should uh, Christians stand on the issue of the uh, refugee crisis? Um, I think part of this comes down to people not reading their Bibles and not spending time in prayer. Um, as a lot of times American Christians can't draw the line between where being a Christian ends and being an American begins. Um, sometimes people in America just assume that the two are, are synonymous um, and that whatever is best for the Christian is best for the state. And that's definitely not true. Um, and vice versa, what's best for the state isn't necessarily best for the Christian. Uh, so, um, I'm not going to give a real in-depth um, analysis here of the issue itself, just of, of the Christian's um, response. And I think a lot of times that people go to extremes on stuff that aren't necessarily needing of extremes. Like, for instance, um, the issue of the security measures. We should definitely have security measures. I mean, goodness sakes. People think that it's either you need to not allow any refugees in or you need to um, let every refugee in. Well, no, and there are security measures that do need to be taken. Um, excuse me, maybe even setting up actual um, containment camps or something. I mean, obviously not like a not like a containment camp like you would think in like war, war, wartime, um, you know, but you know what I'm talking about, where you give them temporary living, living quarters with food and everything, but maybe not so much integrated with society. There's a possibility that involves security as well as taking care of the people. See what I mean? You don't have to compromise helping people for the sake of security. You can do both. Um, the the problem would then be whether the government takes initiative to do both. Um, but once again, we should have a balanced view of this. Um, we should definitely have the government, not Christians, but the government should have security measures. Now, that's the government's job. Okay, now let's go to what the Christian's job is. The Christian's job is to help those in need. And I know some people have been saying things like, oh, help the homeless in America first. Okay, well, let, let's give a little bit of a balanced approach to that. First off, some of the people who are saying this weren't helping in the first place. Now, I know that's not a very valid argument for helping these people, but what I'm saying is, why all of a sudden do you care about not helping these people when you didn't care about helping these other people just yesterday? So, I mean, like, you need to help someone. <laughs> Find whoever you can help and, and, and help them. And... Uh, I guess that's one of my main points here is if you have the opportunity to help the Syrians, then help them. If you have the opportunity to help Americans, then help them. What's important here is that you serve people. That's what's important. That's that's I mean that Christianity can be summed up in, in loving others, you know? Um, I mean let's think about how illogical this sounds. Sorry, let's say let's say the this, this story of the, the, the Samaritan, the Good Samaritan, okay? They go by, they see the person being beaten up and, and, and completely, you know, but once again, they weren't a Samaritan. Why should I care? Samaritans first. I'm sure there were Samaritans at the time who needed help, but he saw someone and he helped the person. Love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Who are those in need? See, and, and so in essence, this is what you're saying when you say Americans first. Sorry, I, I'm here, I have the ability to help you, and I see that you need help, but I need to go find someone else of my same nationality before I can, for, to help them first. Whoever you find to help, you need to help. Okay? Now, it's at this point that some ignorant Christian will say something along the lines of, Jesus taught to go to the Jew first, and then the, uh, the Gentile, and then no. Jesus' mission was to fulfill the law, okay? The Jews were given the law first, okay? So therefore, he went to the Jew first. However, after his death, after he had ascended, when, right before he ascended, after he re was resurrected, he said, go to the outermost of the world, showing that that was a temporal thing, not an eternal thing. Paul picks up on the same theme when he says that he went to the Jew first and then the Gentile. So... Once again, not the idea that um, that we need to prioritize, but whoever you have the ability to help, help those people. However, I do want to note something with this. It is impossible to help other people if you yourself need help. And what I'm getting at is this. There are a lot of Christians I know who are very unwise with their money. They just spend it willy-nilly. They don't ask 
should I buy this? But can I buy this? So instead of being investing their money in, and having something to give to people, they don't because they're at Walmart every other day. Um, or they don't have a job when they can have a job. And so as a result, they don't have the means to help other people because they're living on assistance when they don't need assistance. Now, there are people who genuinely need assistance, and I'm not knocking welfare. I'm saying that some people take advantage of the system rather than helping other people. Why? Because that's our human nature. We are selfish by nature. It takes a step above and beyond to love those people who are unlovable, to serve people who you don't want to serve. That takes a lot of love. However, that's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. A lot of Muslim, Muslims are converting uh, because of the, of the different compassion that's being shown to them. So once again, get your eyes off of the kingdom of earth, America and whatnot, and get your eyes on the kingdom of heaven. Let the government do what the government does. But we as Christians are not the government. We are called to love. And I do want to note that the sign of faith throughout the Bible is loving others. John said in 1 John that if you don't love, you don't love God. You love people, you don't love God. In other places, it talks about, you know, Jesus talks about um, the, the righteous people saying, God, God, when did we clothe you? When did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we give you a place to, 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 to sleep? And he said, when you did it to the least of these. I would say that these Syrian refugees are the least of those. Continually throughout Scripture, it talks about um, the, the, the sign of faith. In James, for instance, he said that, wor and that works show your salvation. You say, oh, I, I have faith. Well, show me your, your um, well, I forget how he says it, but I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, true faith will produce works. So it does not follow to say, I see this person in help, and I'm going to skip them for someone else. It's the same way vice versa. You shouldn't see an American who needs help and say, no, I can't help you because I've got to help the Syrians. Whoever is in your ability to help, help those people. You can have a balanced perspective. You don't have to go to extremes on stuff that don't show any logic or reason whatsoever. Um, and be smart with this and, and, and do what you can to help others. Um, I think that that pretty much summates the the, um, the argument. But remember something that was said by Jesus and many others, by the way. Um, treat others the way that you want to be treated. I would like to say that a good, if not everyone, in fact, let me say this differently. Everyone who I've encountered who said don't help refugees are people who have houses, people who didn't lose everything. Okay, I, I do want that noted. Well, why don't they go to one of their neighboring countries? Well, see, that's something that's going on with with the Islamic thing right now. You've got Iran, and then you've got Iraq, and, and you've got all these different uh, Middle East countries, and they're all kind of on different perspectives, let's just say. Let's just say that and just because you're Islam doesn't mean that you have the same views. And they're Sunni, they're Shiite, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's also political powers at play. So you have all this... All this crap cluster cuss going on and you can't just go anywhere if any, if you're actually aware of the situation Christians for instance um, there are some places where they're just being slaughtered and they can't go there um, Sunnis can't go everywhere where Shiites are and Shiites can't go everywhere where Sunnis are I mean they're 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 not at peace with each other you know so to say why don't they go to the uh, go to their ne neighboring uh, countries it's not that simple it's just not that simple. And once again, I do genuinely hope and pray that you never have to um, go through these kinds of situations where you don't have a home. You don't have a, um, um, you know, somewhere to, to call a safe place. See, in America, everywhere is our safe place. It's America. We've never been conquered. You know, we have this idea that, that you know, it's not my problem unless it directly interferes with me. And this is just not a good Christian attitude to have. Now, once again, there needs to be a separation between religion and state. Let the state do what's best for the state, and let the religion do what's best for the, what's best for, for God's kingdom. Don't forget that. There is a separation there. Just because I'm an American does not mean I'm an American first. I'm a Christian first, and then an American. So, anyways, help. And basically, what this all comes down to is help those who you have the ability to help. When you when you when you pass someone who needs help, help them. Be a responsible Christian. You know, Jesus showed love. I think we should too. 
Um, obviously, it's at this point that someone's going to say something about, well, what about the uh, Samaritan woman that Jesus called a dog? I don't really have time to get into that, but if you would be willing to do an actual Bible study rather than just simply um, brazing through the Bible once in your life, you would know what Jesus is talking about. Um, but one of the things that we see throughout Jesus is he constantly brings up this thing of asking and seeking and knocking. And for those who knock, the door will be opened. Um, don't have time to get into all that, but Jesus made it abundantly clear that he wanted to um, to reach all the world. For instance, John 3.16. So to say that, you know, we can deduce that Jesus didn't want to help the Samaritans, no. No. That's a very narrow and, 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 and just naive perspective not based on scripture so anyways um, I hope that this brought some clarity to the issue um, once again though um, well I think that I've said that all that's going to be all that needs to be said